Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the You, Me, and BTC podcast. I'm not sure if you can tell because my voice is probably still amazing even when I'm sick, but I am a little bit sick. So I'm going to try not to, to, to ramble on too much this episode. And instead, I'm going to hopefully let my co-hosts here do most of the talking. I am Daniel Brown, and I'm here with... Tim Baker. And Zach Bull. <laughs> yeah, Zach is... Uh, we had him last week, and I told him he could join us more often if he'd like to. And he's free this week, so he's recording with us. So, how cool is that? We have on the list for today more China stuff, because as we speak, we're recording on Wednesday, January 11th, 2017, and as we speak, the price is, well, some people would say plummeting, but that's something we should get into, because it's really way higher than it has been, so... uh so the price is lower than it was over the past few days, and uh, we're going to talk about China and why that might be. And um, then we have to talk about Trump. I guess I think we're about, I, uh, I don't keep track of this stuff, but something like a week away from, from inauguration. And um, I don't know, we've touched on this before about how he would uh, affect Bitcoin, and he's made appointments now with all of his whatever cabinet and offices and whatever. And so we'll mention some of that and what we what we think it could do to Bitcoin. Before we get into all that fun, I want to quickly mention again Roland, one of the best Bitcoin dice games on the web. I don't think there's any question about it because it's it's popular. People know it. People use it. So it's trusted. And... It is slick, all right? That's one of the first things you're going to notice there is that it's it's fancy and it's clean at the same time. We, as I mentioned that last week, it's just a good balance. Uh, it's not overly fancy, but it's also not just plain and boring. You can bet and win money. <laughs> There's, it's simple, just like you expect from a dice game. And they, they have a robot if you want to automatically bet with your strategy of choice whatever that may be, Martin Gale, or whatever modification you choose, they are approaching the 4 billion bet mark. That's, that's what I mean when I say it's popular. I mean, it's, it's been around for years, and people use it. <laughs> it's that simple. It's trusted, and it's a great place to gamble. You, me, and btc.com slash Roland, R-O-L-L-I-N. I hope you love it. And that's that's it then. Let's jump into this stuff about China. And like I said, I don't want to talk too much this week, so I'm turning it over to Zach to tell us what the heck's going on in China with Bitcoin, and we'll see where we end up. Go for it. Okay, so as you've noticed, in the past day, Bitcoin is down like over $125, Um which I should say, even though my advice in no way counts as official financial <laughs> advisement. Uh, <laughs> so I will be going into business. <laughs> yeah. Last episode, I said if you don't hold as much Bitcoin as you want, or if you don't hold any and want to buy some, wait. And even though I guess I would have preferred to be wrong in this situation, I was very right. So... <laughs> yeah. If you want any other great advice, hit me up on Twitter at ZXVOELL underscore one. I just tweet out a lot of articles that I read, and I can hit you up with hot takes on Bitcoin advice too. So, regarding the price plummeting, if you go back to last Friday, actually, that's when the price initially started to fall. And Which was, well, I, I think we recorded on Wednesday. So that was two days after you said, eh, it might be not the best time to buy Bitcoin. So I'll <laughs> agree with you there. You had some good advice. <laughs> so, so the price uh, fell by a double-digit percentage point, but not super significantly. A, or a Yahoo Finance article actually um, starts us off on this story of the price falling in the Chinese government because on Friday... Um, the article says the head of a major Bitcoin exchange in China um, said that people use, meaning Chinese people, use cryptocurrency to get around the Chinese government's rules on holdings and earned income and stuff um, all over the country. And after that, which seems to me like a pretty dumb thing to say, but after that, 
Uh, the article says Bitcoin's price took a steep dive on Friday after China's central bank cautioned investors to take a rational and careful approach to investing in the digital currency. Um, so basically, the Chinese government found out that people, I mean, it probably already knew the Chinese government um, doesn't regulate Bitcoin right now, um, but they don't necessarily promote it either. Um, found out people are using it to skirt the rules, and the price fell initially on Friday. Um, and then just today, the price is, some might say, in free fall, um, although it's leveled off a little bit actually within the past couple hours, but it plummeted significantly um, after the Chinese government started investigating several large Bitcoin exchanges in China. So that's the background of the story. All right. So so what do, what do you think then? I mean, I, I've seen some tweets here and there about like, oh, it's just China flapping their mouth or whatever. This happens all the time. They always say that China's after Bitcoin, but it's just part of their strategy to drive the price down so they can buy more. I, I don't know. I've seen all kinds of tweets with all kinds of speculation, and I want to know what, what your speculation is. Do you think that they're really after Bitcoin? Do you think that they're really worried about it, you know, being a bad investment? What do you think is actually going on here? I, I'm, I know it'll be pure speculation, but let's speculate. <laughs> well, <laughs> the speculation from Jonathan Graber of Business Insider, he wrote an article today. He said, Bitcoin is getting demolished. So <laughs> he's not super optimistic about it, I'd say. This is bad. I don't know. I don't know what it will look like when it all works out and the Chinese government decides what it wants to do with the Bitcoin exchanges and Bitcoin users in China. But my first like guess, I would just think it's likely that they don't outlaw it. Like I think Colombia the other day just outlawed Bitcoin outright. But they probably just develop some sort of regulatory scheme like the US is trying to figure out right now where they just sort of bring it under control and try to figure out how to manage it. I don't know. Yeah, I agree that it would probably be something they, they can then control. Either they can control it or they can more easily monetize it for themselves or at least get a chunk out of it. Because, um, yeah, I don't I don't see China just outright saying you can't use this anymore. They have their whole economy is too, I don't know, it's too connected with everybody else. And I think just the a lot of people that work there then have uh, have to be able to work outside of the <clears throat> work online, work outside of just using like China's basic uh, monetary system. Yeah, that's actually a good point. I feel like, I mean, obviously every government won't, but I feel like most governments should realize allowing Bitcoin to function, even if they decide to regulate it somehow, which isn't ideal, but there's, they can still make some money off of it. So they shouldn't ban it altogether. I don't know. I just think it was dumb for that one. Ch I wish I could find a name for it. I don't see one. But like that one Chinese exchange that just said, oh, yeah, people use Bitcoin to get around the rules. <laughs> I want to say this is a total guess, but I want to say OKCoin OK is one of the bigger ones in China. So it could have been that one. But that's a total guess. <laughs> okay. But yeah, I, I mean, I would say, well, I would say there's absolutely nothing to worry about in the long run. Like oh, we've yeah. always said with Bitcoin. I mean, yeah, the price is going down, and yeah, maybe it is just because they're manipulating it, but that's the beauty of Bitcoin is it can't actually be manipulated. I, I mean, yeah, at least not permanently. Like, okay, they can make the price go down by making crazy statements, and that way, yeah, they'll manipulate it. But the actual power of Bitcoin can't really be taken away. It's still a free currency that we can all own by ourselves that we don't have to trust anyone else. And I could go on and on all the general Bitcoin benefits, but I, I think it's real easy and safe to say that regardless of whatever they're doing and whatever their motives are, which are going to be varied. I mean, we, we just talked about this last week, how it, I think we were talking about China. I mean, the government is made up of all kinds of people with all, all kinds of different motives and goals and agendas. So, yeah, some of them might be trying to attack Bitcoin. Some of them might be trying just to drive the price down so that they can buy more. Some of them might actually think it's a bad thing. Some of them might... It, uh, all kinds of stuff could be happening. And I don't really care because it's Bitcoin. So... Yeah, and 
this reporter for Business Insider who said Bitcoin is getting demolished, I think it's key to keep a little bit of perspective because, like, what's today? January 11th. So December 11th, just like one month ago, Bitcoin was trading $1 lower than it is right now. So we had that huge spike over the past month, obviously, record or almost record high. But now it's right back to where it was on like all throughout December and November. And well, I mean, like September, October, November, it was still climbing. So it's not I mean, the, the, the price falling is relative. Obviously, it's a lot lower than eleven hundred per coin, but it's still higher than it was um, relatively recently. So. Right. Yeah. And yeah that, exactly. It's it's always seeming to end up like that, where it's. I mean, it's a few steps back, a few steps forward, but in the end, things seem to come out better and better as long as as Bitcoin continues. And it's it's not even even if it's the price looking worse, it's still even if back whenever it did drop from twelve hundred down to all the way to what it was. I think we even talked about it in a recent episode about it being like eighty for a little bit, but then it stopped around two hundred, where it's. And then from there, it just builds it back up, and it kind of just seems like it keeps on doing that, and it has smaller corrections, like from what it was a few or last week to what it is now, but the, the general trend is, is up normally, and people, like, it's not versus what a Newsweek, no, who did you say? Who was the article from? Business Insider. Business Insider, yeah, yeah, about it being demolished, it's getting destroyed right now. I mean, I I guess, but <laughs> yeah. it's getting destroyed back to barely above what it was. So it's not getting destroyed. It's just this little bit of a jump that it did is just coming back. Yeah. And if that's all China, I could see that all just being from, from just China just renting it up and then right back down because they do control such a big part of it. It's so easy for something because Bitcoin is still relatively small. It's easy – for things to get caught up from just a, like a single country and a single country's regulations on it. And depending on how much of that country's population uses Bitcoin, I don't really know where I was going with that besides that Bitcoin ends up pretty much where it is. Like you can fuck with Bitcoin around, you can change things around, things can get messed up, prices can go up and down, but things do tend to stabilize as long as people remain somewhat calm and they'll just, ah, it's 900. Let's just sell, sell. And it goes all the way back down. As long as people keep a somewhat, if they're not just completely worried about making sure their dollar value of the Bitcoin stays the same, things tend to equal out. That's why you're in Bitcoin for the long game. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I, I mean, yeah, this is, again, we've said this over and over. So we don't have to get into it too much, but that's exactly how Bitcoin works. Every time people are like, oh, it's crashing, it's dead. It's it's still way higher than it was a year ago. And so, yeah, it, it does crash because it bubbles because it's a small market and people get excited about it. Those are real market uh, factors. But exactly like you said, it's just where it was a month ago, which was way higher than it was the month or two or three months before that. There is literally nothing to worry about. And and we say it all the time. So, <laughs> Plus, if you believe the stuff we talked about last episode with China's uh, China affecting it through their dev- devaluation of the yuan, dev- affecting the price of Bitcoin, like there's no signal or sign that China will stop devaluing the yuan, which, if you believe that theory, the price of Bitcoin then will just keep going up. So nothing really to worry about. Yep, yep. Nothing to worry about, nothing to see here. Well, yeah, so if that's the case, uh, that that means we got to move on then, right? If if there's nothing to worry about, we got it all figured out. Oh, guys, it's dropping a lot more now. It's down 20 bucks since when I looked at it last. we got to sell. Oh, jeez, we got to stop recording. They're listening to us. <laughs> they know that we're not worried, and they're just... They're, <laughs> Chinese Pulling government's like, what, well, you're not worried now? Go fuck yourself. You know, drop. <laughs> this bitch is going to 400 right now, motherfucker. I want to start, <laughs> I wish we would start like a Twitter hashtag at this Jonathan Graber guy and just like, I don't know, some you, me, and BTC hashtag that says Bitcoin is not being demolished or I don't know, but that would be funny. <laughs> just everyone tweet at him and say, no, Rebuild not. Bitcoin. Or no. Yeah, his his Twitter username is Bonds F X. B O N D S F X. Bonds F X. And all right, let's do it. We gotta figure out the hashtag right now. What 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 
what what do we say? Bonds is getting demolished, or <laughs> or demolish Bonds? Oh, that's uh, Twitter. Uh, demolish Garber? No, it's that's just, that's a threat. threatening. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's we can't. It do has that. to be something positive about Bitcoin, though. All right, like, I, yeah. I, here's what we should do, guys. I like their photo. They just have a stock photo here in this article of like a wrecking ball destroying a house. So let's just do hashtag Bitcoin wrecking ball. Everybody tweet at Bonds FX with the hashtag Bitcoin Wrecking Ball. And and we won't we won't start our own tweets until this episode goes out. So we'll all tweet at the same time and have a good time. <laughs> and um, yeah, Bitcoin's not being demolished. That's great. You're listening to the You Me and BTC podcast. We need your help. First of all, we'd love it if you could check out our website, youmeandbtc.com. There you can find donation addresses for every single article and episode. And we'd love it if you could make use of those. We could also use some fans and followers, so if you're willing, please visit Facebook or Twitter.com slash YouMeAndBTC. Lastly, remember to subscribe to the show. You can do that on iTunes or sign up on our website to receive email updates. Thanks for your support. Well, I'll, ask, I'll start mine out with a question because I like to divvy up responsibilities so it looks like if I mess this up, it's also you guys. How far <laughs> away are we from the inauguration? I just know that everyone's been crying because Obama was on television and everyone's like, we love you so much. It is Friday the 20th. The so 20th I guess he that's goes nine in? days away when we record. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so people are looking at as Trump's going to the White House, I guess, Obama, like I said, Obama made his farewell speech today. Uh, I don't know if that means he just leaves the White House or maybe this is like an interim right now where actually <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. no laws we don't are actually have a president. true. <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody actually knows. It's a secret. It's but the they purge. Keep the, like yeah, exactly. Like, is that what it's called, that movie? Yeah, the purge. It, well, it's called <laughs> multiple things. And they made like 20 sequels after, but. Yeah, I mean, Obama said farewell and Trump's hasn't been inaugurated yet. So there is no president. Therefore, there is no law. <laughs> so uh Pretty much so i anarchy, think we were, yeah. we were safe to threaten garber or whoever that guy was i mean yeah Gar- for about nine days we're good. <laughs> then after that he's gonna come after us but yeah, yeah um guys we made it uh bitcoin is the only i declare the bitcoin the currency of america now since there's no president uh we made it good night the podcast is done its point anyway <laughs> people are looking at trump and how he's now in the white house and People are, are seeing what he does on Twitter and what he says to Meryl Streep and what he says to all these things. And they're like, what is this guy going to do? And what does this have to do then with something that's an international? It's, it's, has international ties. There's people all over the world who control it, who movers and shakers in the Bitcoin world and the cryptocurrency world. So what will Trump do to it? What will Trump do to the price? What will Trump do to just, the businesses trying to operate in the U.S., the what kind of laws might be brought up against, what kind of laws might be brought up against Bitcoin to make it harder to use or a little bit less private or less what Trump's going to do because I feel like Trump doesn't have all that much of an idea of what Bitcoin is. Um, didn't he make a speech back when he was campaigning about – it was just all about uh, – Oh, he, Under, he hardcore supported Bitcoin. Oh, Remember no, I mean, all he those definitely quotes did. we read on the show? <laughs> <laughs> he did. He came to love it halfway through out of nowhere, and we were given the inside scoop on that, but I think earlier than that. <laughs> but before he was educated. But yeah, it'd be more people – people are worried about him and how he just tweets at people at like 2 a.m. in the morning while being the president-elect. <laughs> now, fuck you, Hamilton. I don't want to have to watch a show. And, but people are more, they're worried whenever it comes to Bitcoin and cryptocurrency because they have to look at who is he going to put in charge of stuff that will then say, we don't need Bitcoin. Bitcoin is something to get around the, uh, the law, like how they're having in China where they're like, this is mo, this is used for money laundering. This is used for not, not paying your taxes. This is used for all this stuff where you might get someone put in by Trump who is of that mind and will push for something. Like that, because besides the the headlines where people are always like Bitcoin's dead or Bitcoin is demolished, you have just as many things about how Bitcoin is used just to buy heroin or call for <laughs> pedophile slash murder things online. 
So it, it's going to be interesting to see what he does. I haven't heard very good things about the people he he's put into different offices. Um, you guys were talking before the show about who was the guy's name that they just put in who was um he's very anti. Well, yeah. So well, uh, wait, wait. The, he's very anti. There's two people. One of them is anti encryption. One of them is supposedly pro Bitcoin. Yeah, and um, I I briefly mentioned last week Jeff Sessions, who is anti encryption, and uh, yeah, like he wants the government to have a back door into into phones or whatever. But I was surprised when this when this other guy came in. Do you want to go for it, Zach? Yeah. So, like you said, Jeff Sessions is pretty anti encryption, which oddly enough is the same position on encryption that Hillary Clinton held for a while recently, but even that was a sharp pivot because she used to be very pro um, encryption uh, technology, um, like developing encryption technology, but then she pivoted and was strongly against it. So that's where Sessions is now too. But uh, President-elect Trump's recent appointment of Mick Mulvaney, a South Carolinian congressman, um, could be a good thing for he's uh the head of the office of management and budgets basically the head of the budget yeah uh, he's very strong uh bitcoin supporter um there is a article from investopedia on sorry i just forgot his last name congressman mulvaney uh, yeah mulvaney um has a few quotes he's quoted as saying Blockchain technology has the potential to revolutionize the financial services industry and the U.S. economy and the delivery of government services, and I am proud to be involved with this initiative on the ground floor. So definitely not anti-Bitcoin. Um, I watched a Senate hearing on Bitcoin and blockchain. They had a series of uh, this sort of innovative technology things like Bitcoin, and a lot of the Congress people and Senate uh Senators don't really have a great idea of fully how blockchain technology and Bitcoin works, but at least he's in the right direction supporting it and open to it. Um, and then, Dan, didn't you say he was like slamming the Fed or something for inflating the dollar and destroying its value or something? Oh, yeah, yeah. I was just reading this from the from the Investopedia article. And yeah, it, it says that he slammed the Fed and exalted the virtues of Bitcoin, saying that it that it was not and could not be manipulated by the government. And if he means that, then kudos to him. I mean, because I think he's right. And it's it's kind of surprising to see someone in government supporting something that he admits could not be manipulated by the government. Because... yeah. As as a member of the government, it's it's hard. Why would you say that you can't control something? I mean, all you want to do is control everything. <laughs> so yeah, kudos to him for for recognizing that. So yeah, I, I guess that's a good thing. I don't know overall in the long run. I don't know how much of an impact he's going to have in in making the whole making the US and the world <laughs> friendly towards bitcoin and promoting bitcoin but but just like he said it it almost doesn't matter even if even if he completely fails and even if the government does try to control bitcoin you know negatively it doesn't matter because he's right it, they can't manipulate bitcoin so so yeah so like i hope i hope that they support Bitcoin and can do some good stuff for it. But at the same time, by his own admission, it doesn't matter. Bitcoin is, is going to be on its own and, and working regardless. So yeah, hopefully. I mean, they could just like, man, no. well, no, I, I mean, I'll agree with hopefully a little bit. I mean, <laughs> cause, cause Bitcoin, like we've all said forever, Bitcoin is still new and we, you never really know for sure. So yeah, maybe they will, uh, figure something out and somehow maybe take it over. But as far as I'm concerned, that's all just completely improbable, and I'm not really worried about it. So yeah, I mean, I, I'll I'll say hopefully because that is what I hope for that Bitcoin will will continue on regardless of what the government does. Yeah, I'll say hopefully. 
Yeah, I agree. I guess most government officials, when they even if they're favorable towards Bitcoin, sort of approach it in a mind with a mindset of how can we control this and monitor it and all of that. When he's just saying, "Oh yeah, exactly." Hey, look, it's a great thing, and we, it's really like beyond what we can control. So just run with it. Yeah. And that's what I would say could be going on with Trump. Uh, I mean, this guy, Mulvaney, seems to understand it if he really, if he's serious when he says that it cannot be manipulated by the government. I think Mulvaney understands. But I would say what's more likely for Trump is that, yeah, he'll admit that, oh, Bitcoin, it has all this potential uh, I, I think he'll admit that because it's so obvious and because he has to. But I think in the back of his head, all he really would want to do is is regulate it. I don't think there's really any doubt that regardless of how good he says Bitcoin is, what he wants to do is is use the government and the government force to to make rules around Bitcoin and laws and and to make it work the way he wants it to work, however that may be, if he wants to, you know, get rid of China with Bitcoin or something, I, I don't know. We're going to get all our debt back from him somehow. we got the best scheme in the world. We're going to figure it out. Yeah, no, exactly. yeah I'd, I'd, I'd agree with you there. Like, it's, it's something that it's, oh, this is a great technology. We can have this in banks, but we need to have... I need to get control at first because I can make it safe for everybody else. That's all I need. I just need it first. We need to get a grip of it. We need to understand yeah, exactly. this technology. We need to study it. It's so great. We have to make it safe. <laughs> if we, it's so great. We have to put training wheels on it. Definitely. We definitely have to put training wheels on it. Let's just nerf, we have to nerf the world. Just put training wheels on everything. <laughs> yeah. No, that's true though. Like even if he, he seems like pretty anti government regulation of it, but all it takes in so many areas, as far as government regulation and stuff is one huge crash or major catastrophe or something. And then the public's outraged and people lose a lot of money and then they want the government to control it and right. yeah. put training wheels on it and make it safe again. So then that's a perfect opportunity for them to step in and take control and try and figure out how to actually do that. But I mean, at least right now, I guess he's, a, he's a good old boy for, he's on our side, but we'll see what happens. Well, how's the stock, stock market been doing with trump like it, it went up after the like right afterwards right and then it kind of went back to normal it's like well it's like been a little bit all over the place so like i don't know how close i don't follow trump news super closely but toyota announced that they were going to build a new plant in mexico and he tweeted something like if you build this plant in mexico expect to pay massive border fees to import those cars and then their stock lost like two billion dollars in value <laughs> and like market cap value over the next couple hours i don't know if it's recovered that is the power of twitter one tweet <laughs> is worth two billion dollars <laughs> he was probably just sitting on his porcelain throne like how <laughs> dare you i need to shit right now so <laughs> you're going to mexico fuck you we're gonna charge the shit out of this place <laughs> so yeah like when and that's happened to one or two other companies sort of it's just like kind of a wild ride but that it just like the wild ride is individual companies one at a time. They're just all afraid of his thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh man, maybe, maybe something with that. Maybe, just how I guess the stock. If people were feeling because there's like half. The, I don't even know if it's half the people. What percentage of people? Because it's some people like, uh yeah, great. Trump's in here. He's gonna care about America. Stuff like stocks goes up. Stuff that's tied into the government goes up. But then. Sometimes Bitcoin, silver, gold, those things tend to go down versus if – I just I, – I guess I can't really judge the whole – everybody's reaction yet because he hasn't really done anything yet. Although I guess he's probably never really going to do anything as far as actually doing something that will scare people. I'm interested to see how people react to it afterwards if it's a, oh, he's going to destroy our stock market or uh, he's going to – he's really – he's going to protect it. He's going to build up – our country's um, ability to sell, st I don't even know where, because I, I have a trouble following it, engaging with other people, because I don't understand it really at, at all for that. But, like, I all that could be a good thing long run, even, like, semi-short run for Bitcoin, because as people realize more and more, well, two things. One is they realize more and more the government can't have direct control over Bitcoin, 
and two, that they can sort of use it as, like what we were talking about last episode, as like a, a hedge against all these other financial risks in the stock market and unsure uncertainty over what Trump's actually going to do when he becomes president and all that sort of thing. It like people will acquire more and more Bitcoin, which will boost the price and could overall be a good thing for people already holding Bitcoin. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it'll just be interesting. I wonder how big of an inauguration thing he's going to get, like compared to what, because Obama's oh, was geez. just like everyone lost the goddamn mind for a few days. <laughs> was that we need I... to go to Washington, D.C. and see the first black president? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, though. I honestly think Trump's could be bigger. We need uh, to go with, to D.C. and see the first bald president. Yeah, well, I mean, it was because uh, there's going to be a crap ton of protesters, <laughs> too. But, uh, hey, one one thing I want to mention before we get to advice of the week. This is pretty unrelated, but just something that was going through my head recently. You mentioned for a second there uh, gold, Tim. And how diff- you know different things are normally good or not good for gold. And I just have been thinking recently, I'm still thoroughly confused about what's going on with gold. Because with all this stuff in India and in, in China, Venezuela, Zimbabwe, whatever, all this stuff about currencies, you know, going to hell, and it's it's helped out Bitcoin, but I'm still thoroughly confused about why gold like has not budged <laughs> in any notable way even with all these crises you know for for years it, it gold has barely moved for for like five eight ten years or something other than down <laughs> since i bought it so <laughs> anyway or no i mean i bought silver but yeah anyway silver's so, been more our bane yeah i don't, I don't want to get into that too much because we're wrapping up soon but that's just something that was in my head no yeah i've wondered the same i mean Obviously, I don't want to get into it too much, but that's true. I was reading something from CNBC uh, that was published a couple of days ago that said investors are dumping gold at the fastest pace in years, and I I don't know why. Like because you mentioned all these currencies that aren't based on anything, right? All going to hell, and so things that are not attached to that, like Bitcoin and gold, seemingly should be where they would turn. But I don't understand. Yeah. I mean, I still have a decent amount of faith in it. I mean, even though Bitcoin, in a lot of ways, Bitcoin uh, takes away from gold because Bitcoin is a lot like gold and also a lot better in some ways. I still, despite that, I still think gold is an incredibly good investment. Oh, yeah. And I still will buy some whenever I get the opportunity. And so I... I don't know. So I'm just wondering why other people are not thinking the same thing right now. But I'd say probably because the I think the most the narrative is that like the the economy it's it's recovering, every stuff is coming back. So gold and stuff like that that's still the people most people buying gold, silver unless they're buying it along with Bitcoin stuff like that are a little bit more I'd say conservative with their money, so I feel like if they're going to be doing that, they might be putting it more into the stock market versus putting it into gold yeah. and silver right now. Yeah, that's now. fair. I, I yeah, I could see that. People compared to whatever two thousand eight and stuff. Yeah, I think people definitely think they at least think we're on an upside in some ways, and so yeah, they might not be trying to find safe havens. But then again, just like I said, with all this India stuff and and, and currency failures, I don't know. Do you think Bitcoin and gold at all compete for the same investors or in the same capital? So like, yeah, I I think there's no way, and here's why: the the uh, Bitcoin's market cap is what like 15 billion, which and gold is trillions. I don't know how many trillions, but uh, it's, true. it's trillions. And so Bitcoin is so much smaller than gold, so that even if, uh, I mean, yeah. If they were actually competing, then Bitcoin would instantly the the price would have to go way up in order for for Bitcoin to legitimately take a hit on 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 gold. Yeah, if Bitcoin itself was taking money out of gold in any meaningful way, then that you know amount of money would just drive Bitcoin's price up like crazy. So, so I mean, yeah, they, they are similar markets. Um, and yeah, there are plenty of people that will buy both. But yeah. I don't think they're competing very much at the moment. 
just because if they were, then Bitcoin would be going way up. If everyone that liked gold was also like, oh, but maybe Bitcoin too, you know, so. Yeah, that's true. And then there's that Zero Hedge article about why Bitcoin and gold should never be compared at all, even though the prices were touching. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, here's what we'll do. We, we'll do advice of the week right now, but we will put that. I forgot about that one and we totally could have talked about it. Um, so we will put that on the list for next time Zach is with us. Uh, if it's next week, it'll be next week. If not, you know, whenever Zach's with us next, we will make that one of our primary topics about. Yeah, th- it was an interesting article. This guy said that, you know, Bitcoin. Yeah, just that it, it couldn't even be compared when people were saying that that the Bitcoin price was about to surpass the gold price. And there's a lot of nuances in there. I, I agree with some of it, but there's all kinds of stuff we could go through. So, so yeah, uh, stay tuned, all you listeners. We will we'll have that probably next week or the week after, and and uh, we'll have some fun. We've been talking about Bitcoin versus gold since you know the first the first few episodes of the show ever, and uh, it's been a, a fun topic. So, all right, guys, are we? Should we do advice of the week? Anyone ready? Okay, so my advice of the week is to go read a book, Ooh. one book in particular. I, After our last episode, Dan mentioned a couple lectures by Andreas Antonopoulos, and I bought his book, The Internet of Money, which came out this past September, and just finished it yesterday. Great book. Um, only $10 on Amazon Prime. So yeah, go read that. I loved it. Oh, Nothing nice. super complicated or complex or hard to understand, very straightforward, great book. So, And he's not paying me at all to say this, I should say, but just great book. We are. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, hey, Zach, I also have to ask, because your advice last week could have made people, you know, thousands of dollars, I want to get more advice from you. Where, where do you stand on buying or selling Bitcoin right now? <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> all right. My advice would be, to not buy any more Bitcoin until the 1st of February and then to buy. Because by that time, I think the Chinese government thing should have gone over. Trump will be fully inaugurated as the president of the United States. So by the 1st of February, I would say would be a good time to buy. So make fun of me if that doesn't come so, true. So, but so you think the price will plummet more before then uh, with China again and with Trump again? It'll at least flatline, and I could, until then, and I could see the Chinese government releasing some statement or closing down an exchange or something oh, yeah, that yeah. could make it fall even more. So, okay, personally, I'm not going to buy any more until at least then. So that's what I would say, the 1st of February. Okay, sweet. So again, yeah, we're not financial experts, but that's just an idea that we have. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, nice. What do you got for us, Tim? Save, I don't know. I have nothing. Save up your money so you can buy Bitcoin at the end of February. I'm probably going to take Zach's advice because I was thinking I need to buy some soon. I'll probably wait until the end of the, let it balance out a little bit. Keep on, I don't know, I, I was about to say look at the, keep your eyes on the news, but it doesn't really matter. You'll find out just, just as well. Keep your Bitcoin safe, I guess. Because <laughs> <laughs> don't lose them whenever they're jumping around $300 all the time because you might have a lot more than you think. And then you might not have a lot more than you think all of a sudden. So again, reminder, keep them safe. Don't keep them in a third party wallet without keep them a secret. Keep them yeah, safe. keep them safe. Yeah, because we're all about right. to have the dark lord, whoever people think to be president. People are gonna freak out. They might start there's gonna be anarchy online, there's gonna be hacking, there's gonna be burning. So keep your Bitcoin safe. I uh my advice is not gonna be about the price. I'm just going to remind everyone to the moment this episode ends, get on your Twitter account and tweet to at Bonds FX, B O N D S F X, with the hashtag Bitcoin Wrecking Ball and let them know that Bitcoin can't really be demolished necessarily. Eh, it could, but we're just going to tell them it couldn't anyway, just so we can <laughs> be more obnoxious. And uh, so, yeah. Tweet him right now, BondsFX with the hashtag Bitcoin Wrecking Ball. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to yet another episode of the You, Me, and BTC podcast. Remember, if you want to have a blast gambling your Bitcoin, 
head to you, me, and btc.com slash rollin'. And if you're looking for more Bitcoin content, you can just leave out the slash rollin' part and just go to you, me, and btc.com. We've got, oh, uh, I think it's safe to say we have hundreds of episodes now. Uh, you know, 157 regular episodes, plus live shows, plus interviews. I think that puts us over 200, or at least near it. And um, so I think it's, it's, it's legitimate to say we have hundreds of episodes available to you, plus articles, reviews, tutorials, Eh, links, tools, calculators, you know, image generators, all kinds of stuff. And uh, it's there for your enjoyment. You, me, and btc.com. Thanks for listening, guys. And remember to come back next Thursday for another episode. Peace, everyone. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>